Look at this place. <laughs> I could definitely get used to starting my morning here. The amount of helicopters flying in and out of Monaco is every few minutes. The reason being, there is a Monaco heli transfer service, which basically is common as taxis around here between Nice and Monaco. If you're going to drive from Nice, depending on traffic, it can take you up to 45 minutes, maybe an hour if traffic's bad. By a helicopter, it's seven minutes, pad to pad. How awesome is that? Something else synonymous with Monte Carlo is of course the supercar scene. Now top marks just finished yesterday which means calm and order has been restored. I've been coming to Monaco for top marks for quite a few years now and every year the scene ramps up and amplifies and things get crazy. Nothing like I've seen on Saturday night though which was essentially a state of emergency. When it gets to drifting and doing burnouts around the Fairmont hairpin that's when the police come in and basically lock the place down. What is going on behind me? all the way down there and all the way as far as I can see down there are confiscated cars. There must be 30 or 40 cars down here and at the port on the other side of town there is also another 30 or 40 cars. Like I said, every few minutes a helicopter takes off. Yeah, normally the cars which are being confiscated are the ones which are really loud, which the GT2 RS is not. So. I haven't seen many of these cars on the road yet and the, the next time I expected to see one was probably on a track day or something. Not in the impound lot of the Monte Carlo Police Department. Okay. Anyway, this is my last day in Monaco. I am actually staying in the south of France for quite a few more days because I'm filming a show. But now we're gonna go pick up the Vantage, drive out of town, try and not get the car confiscated, and we're heading over to the island of Cap Ferrat because it is open season. Just for the benefit of those who have been asking, because I normally wouldn't film myself packing a car because I appreciate it, it's a bit boring. But I have had a lot of people acknowledging that this could be a daily driver. I'm wondering what the baggage space is like in the Vantage. Um, conveniently, I've packed for about two and a half, almost three weeks worth of traveling because after this we're going to Croatia for a different project. More on that one soon. So soft bag, roll on. There is actually this section here which folds down. I didn't know what that was for, but apparently when I picked it up from Aston Martin, when you fold this down, you can fit golf bag lengths there. So I don't play golf, you guys might want to give me some feedback. And I've driven down the whole of France with the bag like that and the rear view mirror is fine. All right, fuel stop. This is the first time that I've filled the Aston up from practically empty. I mean, it's running on fumes right now. So let's see what it takes and how much it costs. We're filling it up with 98, which is kind of as close as you'll get to 97 in the UK. So far, it's been so good, but bearing in mind the car still still being ran in. So it's not at its most efficient because the engine's still a bit tight. But it hasn't been too bad. I've been filling it up at sort of 300 mile intervals when I was on the long cruises down from England. When I was around town, not so much, but as I mentioned, it's still early days for the car. Let's let it bed in. Okay, so that was a full tank for 90 euros for 54 liters. It was the hot stuff. Any fuel around here is just expensive.
so winding down into Cap Ferrat, you look back up towards the mountains that I've just driven down and there is some serious property here. Like, really serious. Beautiful landscape gardens and big gates that hide away everything. And I think, you know when you see the big gates, you're like, I wonder what's behind there. Anyway, it got me thinking, if you were to have four houses around the world, and this is complete dream case stuff, it's like choosing your perfect five car garage. But say you could choose four houses anywhere in the world, where would those four houses be? I think one of them would certainly be here. Then I would probably still have a place in London and the Cotswolds in England, both quintessential British. And then I guess you'd have to go somewhere in the States, I guess. I mean, I'd probably go LA, maybe? Somewhere like that. Also, I'm kind of thinking off the top of my head, selfishly, where's the best car scene? Um, why not? If it's a dream case scenario, why not just have somewhere straight on Pebble Beach? Speaking of magnificent houses, I've just arrived at Villa Efrusi on Cap Ferrat. I mean, there's gaps and there's gaps. Check this view out. on this landscape. Look at these huge, beautiful properties and the view they've got. Look at this incredible view. I mean, it's places like this that just, on the one hand, scramble my mind, on the other hand, give me vast inspiration. I know this is next level beyond the next level, but still, you gotta have a goal, right? <laughs> okay, so about two and a half years ago is when my sort of YouTube journey began properly. And when I say properly, I mean, I started filming regularly, going on road trips. Uh, it was one of the first top marks that I actually started filming. And the really early subscribers might remember a picture of me leaning against my F12, drinking a cup of coffee. Well, that picture was taken exactly where I'm parked right now. We're at the bottom of the Col de Torini. Now, this is where things get really interesting, but it's amazing to be back here, looking back how far things have come. Never, ever in my wildest dreams when that photo was taken, did I ever think that this YouTube scene and Mr. JWW as a brand would go the way it has. So yeah, amazing memory to come back here. And I think this is quite a poignant time to start talking about why I am actually here. So I have been invited to become the third presenter on an online show called Drive Style. That show has actually been in production for a few years, uh, but it was predominantly a German show and they wanted to make the audience a little bit more international. So they have got in touch via Michelin. Now, at the beginning of this year, I became a Michelin brand ambassador, which I'm super proud of, and this presenting role has ultimately come through that. And so I'm heading up to the top of the Col de Torini now to begin filming actually the second episode. Uh, more on that soon. I don't want to give away too much because I'm now hitting this fantastic driving road. But yeah, it's such an incredible nostalgic trip because the last time I was here, the last thing I thought about was, wow, the next time I come back, I might actually be presenting a fully produced, fully fledged TV show. Anyway, we're now on uh, 12 miles of tight, twisty roads, so I'm gonna exploit the most of this road, and then we'll see you at the hotel at the top.
chill down. We're now at the top of the Col de Torini. This is where I'm going to be based for the next few days. This is literally my home. This is going to be my home for the next few days. Uh, I shan't give too much away about what's going on here because ultimately I want to use the behind the scenes of this as the teaser for what's to come because I'm now on technically on set. And that was the first time that I have filmed with the Vantage on a proper, proper road. And I've got to tell you, this thing is magnificent. When, you, when it finds its flow, it's got such a lovely balance. Also, some other enthusiasts up here driving cool cars around. Uh, but what I'm really excited for now is the production that we're making up here. Uh, we have actually got permission to close the Col de Torini just for us. Just to give you a flavor of how next level this production will be. Also, I've just had a look inside the hotel. They've given me the key to my room. You know it's good when the key ring to your room has a Ferrari on it. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to sign off and, uh, yeah, make the most of my time here, settle in, and I will be back to you soon with more of this. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ciao!